They do not tell any sort of fortune. They're incapable of telling fortune. Can they talk? No. And even if they could talk, could they tell a fortune? No. It is impossible to know anything before the event transpires. Remember? Remember. Experience. <coughs> Don't interpret. Okay. Where Something are we at? Else? Go back. There you go. Let's take another. What time is it? Does anyone turn the phone back on? We're going to try to turn the phone, guys. We're going to turn the phone back on. It's... 50628. Wait, 505-2806. All right. Hello? Hi, hold on one second. Okay, go ahead. Yes, we've made connection. Yeah, finally. We huh? for <laughs> well, we disconnected for a little while, son. What's your name, honey? Uh, Chris. Chris? Okay. And your birthday? January 23rd. 1973. 1973, darling. Hold on, okay? Stay with me just a minute. So we're talking about an eight destiny. Have you ever had um, your birthday added up numerically in the science of numerology? No. Okay, well, according to this, let me make sure. Seven and three is one, two, and that's a seven. So you have an eight destiny. And this tells me, of course, um... Chris, that you uh, have a problem relaxing, you have a problem in releasing control, and you're very driven and you want to do things in the right way. Everything I've been talking about tonight applies to you, okay? okay? Learning how to relax. And we, Sandy is reminding me that we threw all those eights on, with the dice tonight, honey, so you were really coming through. You were really, really coming through. You are a very artistic person, honey, and cannot be still. You've got a lot of energy that runs through you, and you've got too many options. You hear me, Chris? Too many options. That's your problem. You're capable of doing too many things, and so um, forcing yourself to be still and to go... <laughs> Go after. I don't. We're talking about being a stranger to ourselves this, tonight and seeking after ourselves. But what I'm the message to you tonight is to do that thing that is the opposite. Do that thing that is facing you that you would not do. You would not do it, Chris. Okay. Therein are you going to find a piece of yourself that has been eluding you. And that is causing you such disgruntledness um, and causing unrest and causing a deep sense of dissatisfaction. Right now, you're going through a period of numbness. You hear me? Numbness, where nothing doesn't fit, nothing matters, and you're trying to make things fit that no longer fit. You're trying. You're trying to put together a piece of a puzzle that the pieces that they belong to another puzzle is what I'm saying to you, okay? And um, you are having to disassociate yourself with some concepts that you've held on to about yourself. And you have tried to be very congenial and very adaptive and very um, compliant. Now, remember all these words. I love these words, and I, I wish that you would look them up. I'm a real... Um, I love words, but anyway, it's time for you to stop being all three of those words, whatever I just told you, okay? Compliant was the last one. Stop doing that. You are learning how to assert yourself and not feel guilty about it. You hear me? Yeah. And you are learning to go after, and you're getting a whole new concept about money. You have up until this point put put prestige and honor and a whole bunch of stuff into money. That's not it. It's energy. And you need to be busy doing things that are creative, but you've got to do that thing that you have denied yourself and that is opposite. I cannot stress that enough. There's a part of yourself that even the people that, if you were to tell them you were going to do it, they'd say, Chris, you would never do that. What are you going to do that for? You do that first. You hear me? Stop apologizing and being embarrassed and trying to explain anything in your life. Okay? I love you, darling. Thank you for no, calling. Yeah, you what? Who? Yeah, you ever seen that Hammond Town on TV? Yeah. Yeah, that's, like yeah, that's <laughs> what so many people say. Yeah. What do you think of that? She can't stand her. No. Another quick thing I want to say one more 
Is that right, Bridget? Yeah. What? You can't stand Miley Cyrus. Oh, I love her show, but I don't know about her. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> honey and that's what but you have up until this point been apologizing for your need to excel you've been sublimating there's those words again i'm using some big old 10 cent words this tonight but i'm saying darling stop apologizing for that energy that is trying to manifest in you you've got a strong strong energy that is leading you into a direction that is totally opposite from the life you have lived up until this point you are a stranger unto yourself. Tonight you are meeting Chris. Okay? Okay. Okay, thank you, honey, for calling. Bye. Bridget says bye, and thank I you for saying that. that. <laughs> but she really doesn't. Well, she tells me she don't like uh, Do you like her tonight? She's Pisces. Do you like her tonight? Yeah. <laughs> she likes she likes her tonight because she says she, she looks like her, but she's prettier than Hannah Montana. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Chris. All right. We okay. made connection. You see that? Yes. We made connection with that eight. What are we doing, Sandy's well, waving we over there? we have one minute. All right. We'll read something. Okay. Um, I'm real enough, I suppose. You're real enough? I'm real enough. I'm real enough, too. How about you, Sandy? You real enough? Well, it's been a wonderful, wonderful show. I'm glad that we um, had the time and opportunity to uh, do this. Look at me saying all that stuff. I don't care. I just enjoy it. I just flat enjoy it. I enjoy what I do. I love what I do. Bridget loves what she does. And Bridget, what you got to say? Bye. Oh, that's what you got to say? She's saying bye and I'm saying hi. And that's it.